a lot of ladies talking about. And it, it caught me by surprise, but what's really more surprising is the amount of times I'm hearing it, seeing it in different places. I'm hearing that manly men are back in. We're talking about no more Michael Sarahs, no more Timothy Chalamet, Chalamet. None of these like small pinky sized men. If you get if you're under 215 pounds, it's a wrap for you. You Ooh. gotta start eating. I hear this is what I've been saying. I hear my even the barber told me as a female barber. She was like, Yo, listen, I'm ready to put the clippers up. If he could retire me, if I could cook all day, I'll clean the house, I'll raise the kids, I'll do everything that a woman in the nineteen sixties would do, as long as he comes home to me, he makes the money. And he helps raise the kids. I'm hearing that more and more often. Now, I want to direct this one first to you. Mm. I'm wondering if it's an age thing and not a time in the world thing. I'm 31. You're 38. 38. When you were 30 to 33, did you start hearing that? Did I start hearing that girls were looking for providers? Providers and because you know we were in the age of like boss chicks don't need right. no man mm-hmm. men are garbage but now like manly men kind of sort of tell me what to do men looking for submissive women is back so I'm confused because initially you started this off with size and then you turned it size? into yeah you were like. You said the skinny people. <laughs> oh, I'm talking about. I'm talking about like small. I'm. I'm, I got confused because you're like, like anybody under two fifteen. Like. Okay, okay, okay. Let me restate it back for you then. I'm talking about like stereotypically man's man, a man's man, and I'm. I was using the size as an example of okay. like society's desire to like emasculate men. Got you. But like now they're essentially the, the saying like, I want a big guy. Right. I want a man who's like a man who lifts weights, who, mm-hmm. you know, tells me what to do, who makes the money, who, you know, that like a manly man who has so, a beard. You're asking, is this, is this, you're, you, are you hearing this because you're growing older and you're dealing with maybe an older type of woman Correct. or is this a like, societal change? I think this is uh, the tr- I think this is happening in a lot of aspects of the mm-hmm. world. Tell me. So there's been a uh, there's been this new wave of quote unquote woke mm-hmm. that's been out here in the streets that are really uh, ha- have had the microphone for a long time now, and we're starting to see now some of the what that path leads to, and I think women are starting to deal with men that are trying to be woke because they feel like this is what women want. Mm -hmm. And I think that women are starting to realize that, Hey, it sounds great when, you know, to have a guy that supports my career and all this kind of stuff and is willing to do, uh, you know, is fine with being a stay at home dad. Mm -hmm. And I'll be the breadwinner and all this kind of stuff. It sounds good. And I think it sounded really good in on paper. It looks good. Mm -hmm. And I think in, in when, when you think of it as a thought process, you're like, that would be really awesome. Mm -hmm. And then you in it Mm. and you got to make all the decisions because a man that's conditioned to be okay with not feeling like he's providing Mm -hmm. to that is the same type of man that will acquiesce everything to you. Because the same mentality that makes a man feel insecure with their woman paying all of the bills, that same ego is what's going to drive them to go out there and want to be a provider, want to want to help their woman, all that kind of stuff. So Mm -hmm. that ego, that toxic masculinity that women were trying to get rid of. When they started meeting men that didn't have that ego or what they claim toxic masculinity, they started to realize, I think they're starting to realize that, yeah, it's really hard to, it's really hard to, you know, have this lifestyle with, with that. Cause there's a certain point where you just want that man to like take over and make you feel safe and do all that kind of stuff. But that's part of that t- toxic masculinity. So I think that you'll probably start seeing more and more people want this just because I think there's more and more or there's more and more uh, of the other out there as well now. 
Hmm. When we were growing up, there wasn't that you had to be like, if you were not toxic masculine, if you weren't that masculine man's man, all that kind of stuff, you got bullied and picked on. So everybody was striving to be that. Now they're making it okay to not be that way. Hmm. So there's more and more uh, people, uh, options of people that, are cool with their woman providing everything hmm. are cool with not not being a provider are cool with like staying at home and doing the you know non the submissive things that women are usually do so yeah i think it's probably a change more than just you're starting to see because of your age sam all right <laughs> he was waiting, he was waiting patiently. <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting all day to talk to Sam about this. Right. Give it to me. This is my personal experience, so I won't speak on anything else. I have never had a conservative girlfriend. Okay. All my girlfriends have been liberal, left leaning, kind of woke ish. <coughs> Can I ask you one question about that? Yeah. When you say liberal, do you also mean the way that they act? Generally, yeah. Like. Uh, sex positive, like doesn't like they won't like free like f like you yeah, know what more, I mean like kind of more like wild yeah on the not, wild side. I've never dated like a, a Christian conservative okay you know, go to church on Sunday I don't I don't think so I, I have to remember but no I remember mainly I've dated mostly those girls okay and they disagree with me um. Basically everything, mm -hmm. but all the good sides of me that they liked, the security, taking care of, money, all, all these things that, you know, that they liked about me, mm -hmm. they just, you know, they put on their blinders, they ignored the red flags, and they're like, you know what, I, 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 I like this. And I'm like, why don't you date a guy who fits with you, <coughs> who sees eye to eye with you? Like, oh, well, mm. I, am, I say all these things, but in reality... I really want this. This is my core. I want a man to provide. I want a man to take care of me. Security, make me feel safe. Fuck my brains out. You know, like <laughs> like I don't want I don't want a man to respect me in the bedroom. I want him to to do things. She, I, she, she wants a man to take control in all aspects. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> don't bring me on that one. <laughs> this is Sam. Yeah, this is Sam. Right? This is all me. This is all Sam. This is all Sam. No, no, this is no one else. This is a great time. This is no one else. I don't need you. I don't need you bringing me into this conversation, Kelby. I know what you tried to do. Nah. This is him. He's doing a great job. Go ahead, Sam. You got it. I gave you a round of applause so far. You doing good? Bring me back. Where were we doing? Good out here, boy. All right, go ahead. So the Fed, like what you what you asked. Is it back in fashion? I I don't think it ever left per se, and I don't think it's a generational thing because I see girls, you know, in my college class, and they're only going for these guys. But what kind of guys? You know, the more, manly, more manly, okay. not Michael Sarah, whatever, okay. whatever you're saying. Okay. And it also comes out of necessity, like when you have these, you know, movements of women, like, oh, I want to be the breadwinner, I want to be the the boss bitch, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's fucking hard work. It's hard work to be the breadwinner, especially, you know, and when harsh times come in. Mm. What what's the quote, Sunil? Shit. When hard times I studied for this. <laughs> <laughs> I read the book. Hard times happen. No. Good times create weak men, weak men create hard times, hard times create hard men. Mm. So mm, say that. Hold on now. All right, all right. That's a bore. <clears throat> Let me say it slow. <laughs> you know, I know I gotta enunciate. Right. Good times create weak men. Weak men create hard times. Hard times create hard men. Go ahead, Dan. All right. I hear that. So. Preach. Girls girls are now reverting back to like, oh, I kind of don't really want to do the, the man's job. I can't do it as well. I'm not saying that women can't do it. I'm saying if they have the option to not do it, what was that Ali Wong routine? It's like, shut the fuck up. Stop telling them the secret. I want to stay home all day. Mm. Like, there's some comedian who's like, yeah, so I actually had to take care of the kids. I did the laundry. I cooked the foods. And it's not that hard. <laughs> and he's really telling, like, yeah, I had a good time. I walked around the park. And so, like, I'll, yeah. And he's like, yeah, I'll do it. I'll, I'll, I'll do all that stuff. I had fun doing it. Mm -hmm. And this is a, wi a woman coming to you. This is a man coming okay. to doing it. Okay. So he's taking care of the kids now, and he's having the time of his life because, I don't know, it's we're different. Men and women are different. Sorry. Sorry, Internet. I, I know that's a controversial <laughs> thing to say now, but men and women are different. So if women are... It's, you're in a safe space, man. Say whatever you want to say, I know bro. I am, but I'm just apologizing because I don't want the demonetize. This isn't the people on the Internet podcast. <laughs> 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 Get them, Chris. 
<laughs> they did just take Andrew Tate down. Oh, they no, did. my favorite Andrew uh, Tate. Uh, I love that guy. <coughs> I'm a oh, fan of Andrew Tate. He's, he's awesome. Okay, okay. <coughs> but so this is a general thing. Women are better with kids, all right? And men are better at providing because we do more dangerous jobs. We do crazier shit. We make more money. We're not office managers. We're diesel techs. We're laborers. We do construction. Like, you don't see a lot of women digging ditches. I have a question. Do you, do you think because life has gotten harder mm. due to COVID and all this kind of stuff that maybe women are starting to step up and be like, it would be really nice if I had somebody that could like, take care of me right now. So here, I have a theory. I'm going to say no, but I'm also going to say it's a part of it. Okay. So I, I believe that all of society lives on a pendulum. And in the past, men had the power of the world. Right. They had they held the power of the household. They held the power of the money. They held the power of the business. They held the power in the in the government. They had the power of the world and then they abused it. They abused everything that they were given. So the the hormone of society went out of whack because it went all the way to the left. Then women respond to that by saying, I don't need you if you're going to be. A negative part of my life, abusive, evil, greedy, corrupt. I, I don't need you. So I'm going to provide for myself. But that's not that's not the, the natural like feeling on average. Right. It's it's a re I think it was a response to the balance going out of balance. So now we have this shift where men are so either apologetic or so um um demasculinized right because because they're because they think oh because i i i went all the way to the left i need to go all the way to the right <coughs> so then now the 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 balance is completely out of whack so in order for us to get back to where we need to be we would have to be back in the center not where men have all the power and not where women don't have any power. It needs to be somewhere in the middle where our we both have powers that are unique to us both. Is and that I, possible? It, it, it is. And, and it's just that pendulum. So I think COVID, why I say it plays a part, is because I think COVID came in and made life real tough for a lot of people. Single mothers had to, had to work from home and raise their kids all at the same time. And they were like... Damn, if I could just have another person, right, who, who could who could hold this responsibility and then I hold that responsibility and then we do this together, mm -hmm. uh, this would be great. But COVID probably sped up the pendulum going all the way from the left to all the way to the right, you know. And then with all of the things that came about in the last four years with the movement and the uh, um, with COVID and all the racial things and da, 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 da. All of these all come culminated in, in the, the balance going like super out of whack. So now I think we're just kind of getting back to the middle slowly. It's going to take another like 10 years before we get there, but that's why I'm starting to hear it. I'm mm -hmm. starting to hear that. Like, you know, the, the same woman who four years ago said, I don't need no man, men are trash. Um, you know, I got this on my own, da, 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 da. you know, they've, I've heard so many crazy things. There's a song where she, where this girl was saying, I don't need no man. I wish they would all die. Like all of that is kind of thrown away. And not only do they want somebody there, I think women are also kind of like embracing what, uh, divine femininity is, you know, I used to say all the time after I went on a date with a woman who gave me the same energy I put out. Like I just went on a gay date. <laughs> like I just went on a date with another man. You know what I mean? Cause it was like, you might as well have a beard cause <laughs> you're a dude. Right. So that actually had me saying like, Oh, I kind of want like a girly girl. Right. Like I want a girl that likes pink. I like a girl who's like interested in being a mom one day. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it, it, it made me realize that all of this stuff is like changing. So I think it's just really just slowly going back to what it was before where it was like, look, 
If y'all promise not to abuse your power, you can have some of it back. What do you think the abuse was? Um, so much financial abuse. Man who made the money made all the decisions about the money. Physical abuse. I mean, men are bigger, stronger. You know, nobody talks about that in the fifties and the sixties, but men were beating beating the women, right. and they were staying. They didn't have any opportunity to go anywhere else. You know what I mean? So they had to stay. So now it's like we have to say, "Yo, look, the money is not my money; it's our money." Right. It's not my household; it's our household. You know, and I think that's where the abuse came in, where the men was like, "I work; this is mine. I'm just giving it to you. You can hold it. Right. You could buy things for the kid, but if I decided to, maybe not. The partnership needs to be elevated. Exactly. <laughs> Both people have to to take in control of their power. Right. Understand it's a team. Like that's that's how my parents' marriage is. Because mm-hmm. even though my mom never worked in this country, as far as like a mo- a job that brought in money, mm-hmm. um, my dad looked at her as a just as important to the overall success of the household because she made his life easier, whether it be cooking, cleaning, make sure the house and all that kind of stuff's in good order. Or then when me and my sister were around taking care of us, doing all those type of things. So like he realized or what the lifestyle that he wanted to create that my mom, uh, my mom's job was just as important, just as important as him that was actually going out there and, you know, making the income. So Mm -hmm. he, there was no separation of whose money this is. This is just our money. Mm-hmm. I'm maybe the person that is getting the paycheck, but all of this couldn't happen unless both of us are, you know, doing what we need to do. I seen they, they're co CEOs. Yep. You know what I mean? So I think that's what's happening. And at the same time, too, I don't think, I don't think most, if not a, at, at the very least, a lot of women want to be in a relationship with a, another woman who's like, if they're straight, right? They want to be in a relationship where the man is the man, like act like one. You know what I mean? Like act, act like you could fix my tire when it's flat, mm-hmm. you know, um, get out of the car and go pump the gas for me. Right. You know what I mean? Like that kind of stuff cater to your woman. Right. Versus like, you know, I think about Timothy Chalamet. He probably sitting in a car too. Like, which one of us is gonna go? You know what I mean? Like, I believe in that. I believe in like, yeah, that's like how I've been raised, and it's in 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 like in, in my brain as well. It's like you know, you your your job is to try to make your girl's life as easy as possible. Their job is trying to make your life as easy as possible. That's we, it. We both have different ways of being able to do that, right? So. Mm-hmm. To me, that's like, uh, yeah, I, and but you know that's chivalry. But then you know there was an extreme that looked at that and be like, why do you feel like you need to take care of a woman? Why can't exactly. you know like? But that's so, because the pendulum went all the way to the other right, side. or just the microphone was handed to the, you know what I mean? Like mm. I think that I think that like I said, I think those extremes are still out there. I think both sides still have a very big microphone. The toxic men. Because there is toxic masculinity out there, and the toxic female female femininity, I Mm -hmm. I guess we should say as well. Mm -hmm. They still have the microphones. I don't think the in the middle people have the microphone. Mm -hmm. They're not the ones that are getting. Well, what I think is happening, Kelby, is when people are living these lifestyles that are supposedly like the toxic masculine lifestyle. To me, isn't enjoyable. No, it's not. The toxic feministic lifestyle. I'm think I'm thinking women are starting to realize that that's not an enjoyable life. It's not. It's lonely. And so they're realizing that okay, well, it is kind of nice to have that, and maybe all that stuff that they threw in as toxic masculinity is like, no, nah, some of that stuff is good. Like mm-hmm. I I want that when I'm creating my build a man, you know, like mm-hmm. I want some of that in my masculinity. Know. Yeah, yeah. Sam, do you pump the gas for your girl? Of course, every single time. Yeah, Chris. Yeah. Do you? Do you? Yeah, remember how you asked me the first time I said yeah? <laughs> I don't know that's what that means. I do it for any female, Fem- feminine person. If, if I'm my, if my uh, friend that's a girl's driving the car, I'm pumping her gas. If my sister's in the driving the car, I'm pumping her gas. Like, yeah, it's not, I just, it's not offensive, but it's no. man's work. Come on now. <laughs> Sam got excited about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm opening doors. I'm like, 
making sure the girl sits down first, you know, like, you know, all those type of things. Now, here's something I will say. Back in the day, <laughs> the man, the man came home with the check, right? Yeah. And pay for everything. Yep. I'm not going to say I have a problem with that. I don't think I would, depending on how much money I make. But because You're plenty of money, they don't know that. <laughs> don't tell people that I'm poor. Uh, but but um, I like ambitious women. Yeah. Like it's a turn on for me. You don't have to be a, a boss babe or anything like that. But if you have some goals like, yo, this is what I want to do. Da, 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 da. Even if it includes being a mom, but like. If there's a plan in there, you know, like, right. like, so I like ambitious women. And on average, a lot of men sometimes starting to feel like an ATM for the family when they come home. Mm -hmm. Maybe that has to do with the partnership being off because he comes in with the check. Maybe she spends the whole thing and he has no say in it. But if they did it together, you know, it would change. But do you feel like you might get that kind of feeling? And that goes for everybody. Like, I would feel... <clears throat> A little difficult if I was coming home with the check and I and I just didn't feel comfortable being the only earner because I like an ambitious person. No, so I don't think that one. It, you don't need to necessarily have a, a wife that stay at home, right? But that's not what we're saying necessarily. Right. We were talking about more what type of man the right. woman's looking for. Right. right? This is the evolution. Of <laughs> right. So. Uh, as far as um, having women that want to still have a career, I'm cool with that as well. Mm -hmm. And as far as feeling like an ATM, you only feel, at least for me, I only feel like an ATM when I feel like the woman f f isn't bringing anything to mm -hmm. the table. Mm -hmm. So I planned this date. I drove. I'm, I'm, um, I'm going to pay for everything. But you can't even carry the conversation right now? Okay. This, okay. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, yo, at least be an entertaining date. You know what yeah. I mean? Or like, at least like now you're going to bring attitude into the situation. That's when it starts like, so what, what are you doing? Like, what am I paying for? Like, you know what I mean? So I think mm. that's when I've always felt like those times when I felt like this, I was just an ATM mm -hmm. was when I'm like, like, what am I benefiting out of this? Like, what are you bringing to the table other than like, I think that sometimes there's a certain woman out there, not all women. I'm saying there's a certain woman out there that believes just them getting ready hmm. makes them, it makes it like, well, I came, I got ready. My presence is here. Yeah. I, you can look at me. Sam, do you, have you ever felt like an ATM? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Well, I, I, the, the thing you're saying about, you know, their presence, like they say, Oh, well, I shouldn't have to spend money because I'm spending all this money on hair and makeup and clothes. I'm like, but I never asked you to do that. Like, I think you look hot in sweatpants and a tank top and your hair in a bun. Like, that's good for me. I like that. You're spending hundreds of dollars on all this other stuff. I'd never asked you to do that. Mm. But they say, oh, what's well, for me? Like, well, that should have nothing to do with me then. And that's just for you. Then that's for you. You you do what you want to do, but don't bring that in the conversation of like, oh, what you bring to the relationship. Mm. But then there's other women that don't that that are just amazing people to spend time with i'm cool with spending thousands of dollars yeah. mm. and because it's just mm -hmm. so enjoyable it's like why why mess things up with the money at this point it's mm -hmm. just like if i got it okay cool we'll do it like i just enjoy this moment like this is i'm having a really really good time and then you're not thinking about it then i don't feel like a atm mm -hmm. but then i could spend less on a girl where i'm just like you haven't even asked me one question about me. Man, those be the worst. Yeah. Those be the worst. Spent $50 for nothing. Facts. Yeah. <laughs> Facts. That's when, I, that's when I feel like the ATM. So to go back to your original question is like, I don't think that you would. It, I feel like if your partner is adding value to you in a way that you um, enjoy and you feel like you like value what she's bringing to it. Mm -hmm. I don't think that money will ever become an issue. That's what's up. That's what's up. Hey, I wanted to say something about when you said they'd be spending money on the makeup and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I remember one time, long time ago. The cough means it was last week. <laughs> <laughs> I got allergies. Uh, <laughs> Seasonal change. Y'all are assholes. I went, uh, I went on a date. Um, and, and. Oh, so you this know, was last week. <laughs> no, no, no. no. And, and she gave me a kiss, right? And I remember. 
being in the car like scratched my face. And I and then I got home and I realized I took her face home with me. <laughs> I looked like Michael Jackson when wow. I looked in the mirror. My whole face was like powder white. No like it was crazy. I never experienced nothing like that before. Wow. Yeah. Um that's when I knew she was definitely wearing like six layers of a hundred dollars worth of makeup. <laughs> Facts. Glad I wasn't the one who had to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> never saw her again. Um or maybe at all. Who knows what she looks like? Yeah, yeah, you might, you might have seen her. <laughs> I, you, you matched with her on Bumble. You went out the next day. You look so familiar. You might not be able to recognize her outside of the club. Are you? Anyway. <laughs> Did I take your face home? You're me? married. Oh, mm. All right, this was a good conversation. Aside from the COVID stuff, uh, uh, Chris, you got anything you want to say? No. All right. Anybody else? There's so many topics I produced uh, we for this. About one one. No, no, we got we got a list. We have a list. Well, um, if if anything, if you guys like the show, do us a favor, like the video if you're watching through the video. If like you're it. like it, uh, if you are <laughs> listening to the podcast on whatever podcast your uh, site you're listening to, like it, and also leave us a review. If the review is really good, um, it helps more people listen to the show. It helps us. Um, give you guys a better show and all that kind of stuff. But if you're also watching the video, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel and, uh, and listen to us every single week on Tuesdays and Thursdays. All right. Uh, tell a friend, tell your friends or don't. There's like a thousand podcasts out there. Who cares? There's like a million podcasts on the air. Sam's our head of marketing. <laughs> <laughs> Do whatever you want, audience. Who cares? <laughs> Fuck it. No, Except, nothing matters. No, love us. Follow us. <laughs> <laughs> That's Andrew. Goodbye. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mess it up. <laughs>